I remember the first time I played Zelda as a kid with my dad and brother. Bomb swords and boomerangs? Yes, please. A few months later, my dad brought home Metroid. Shooting guns, missiles, and freezing enemies? Yes, please. A few years later, we got to play Super Metroid. <laughs> more guns, more missiles, and nukes. Yes, please, times 10. But then one day, my dad loaded up an action-adventure game, and this is what I remember seeing. All I was thinking to myself at the time was, the graphics aren't that good, but was that a spell? All right, old man, you caught my interest. What do you got here? And on that fateful day, I played a game that would haunt me for almost two decades. This is Zelliard. Zelliard is an action-adventure game that was made in 1986, but didn't get released in North America until 1990. I didn't get to play it with my dad and brother until about 1994, so by this time, we had been spoiled by games that were developed nearly a decade later. Now do me a favor, remember this face. You got it? Okay, cool. Let's get to the game. The story starts out with a demon from another galaxy who doesn't have a shred of compassion for humankind. That seems like a bit much. And of course, he's trying to take over the world. The king of Felishika prayed to his spirit from the holy land of Zelliard. Using gems called holy crystals, they were able to imprison the demon, and it was said he would slumber for 2,000 years. And of course, that time is now upon us. The kingdom, which was once vibrant, started to rain sand. That looks like blood, but okay. And then the princess gets turned to stone. So it's up to us to go and save her. Our name is Garland, the Duke of... Okay, hold up. Who the hell is this? Where'd Viking Homeboy go? Seriously, why must this game turn my channel into a channel of lies? So I understand the game was made in Japan, because you can clearly see the Japanese style influence in the characters' faces, but who the hell greenlit this? I mean, it, it doesn't even come close. Alright, I'm gonna correct this. Hold on. There we go. Way more consistent. So, the plot of the game. Get the crystals, kill the demon, save the princess. Got it. Our adventure begins. The game has eight different levels, and like most action games, we go to the next one after we defeat the boss of that level. Throughout the game, we can actually see our progress by looking up and seeing these holy crystals that we collect after defeating each boss. I really like this touch, because it's a constant reminder of how far we have gotten throughout the game. Level 1 is a really simple level. We go in the dungeon, jump around, find a key, open the boss's lair, and kill him. Done. Cool, on to level 2. The enemies start to become progressively harder, so it looks like we need to go into town and upgrade our weapons and armor. Unfortunately, the town setup gets really annoying. The way the game works is we collect these things called almas that are dropped by enemies. We then have to go take the almas to the bank and we exchange them for money. The problem is we don't want to keep the money on us because if we die, we lose it all. So we have to deposit it to keep it safe. However, we can't just go into town and buy stuff because we need to withdraw money first. And I really hate seeing this greedy two-faced bastard. I, I mean, watch this. I deposit what little money I have, nothing. But if I deposit a lot of money, ah, now look at him, all full of smiles. But as soon as I'm about to leave, boom, right back to his frumpy ass self. Withdrawing money does get a bit tedious, but it's not the biggest issue that I have with the setup of these towns. The biggest issue that I have is when I'm in the shops. You know how like in most games where you push a button and it will skip the scrolling and then go to the end? Yeah, you, you can't do that in this game. And this constantly makes you select an option you didn't mean to. And the only reason why I'm doing this is I'm trying to skip their same repetitive messages that they say every single time. And I know exactly what you're thinking. Well, just calm down and don't click on it. Just wait. But here's the thing. The reason why I'm doing it is because you can do it outside with the townsfolk. Look, I'll go talk to anybody. Watch, here, talk to him. Don't want to listen? Skip. Done. Try to do it in the shop? Nope. Stop. Can't do that. You've now clicked the wrong option. Okay, back to square one. So why they made it that you can skip text with townspeople and not the shop owners is beyond me. All right, now we're fully upgraded. We got a new spell and now we go to level two. Again, fairly simple. It's a little bit longer, but it's pretty straightforward. Get the key, kill the boss, get the holy crystal, on to level three. Now here, they added a little extra challenge to this level. We can't get to the boss because this guard won't let us pass. We find out someone stole the hero's crest. 
So we get the crest and then he lets us pass on to the level 3 boss. Once we get to the boss, same thing. Kill the boss, get the holy crystal, on to level 4. Great. <sighs> An ice level. I always hate ice levels because you slide. There are boots that we need to find, but I never found them, so I skipped the boots. You ever heard the term so close yet so far? Yeah, you'll be thinking that throughout the entire game, because they do this to you on pretty much every level. Doesn't matter, we skip the boots, get the key, kill the boss, get the holy crystal, on to level 5. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> now it's this level. This is the level that starts to test you. This level has this blue substance called Gelroy all over it. If we touch it, it instantly damages us, and the only way you can touch it safely is by getting a thing called the Parika Shoes. Secondly, after talking to the Sage of the Village, she informs us that we can't fight the boss until we get the Knight's Sword, but when we go to buy it, the blacksmith won't sell it to us. Turns out, he lost his Crest of Glory, so now we have to go find it in order for him to sell us the Knight's Sword. And this level is no joke. The creatures here are ridiculous. Ridiculous. You have these little red blobs that can only be damaged with fire. If you hit them normally, they multiply. Then you have these zombies that can only be hit in the head, eyeballs that fly at you at the speed of blink, and let's not forget these anti-gravity assholes. Every time I'm stuck on a ladder, they just so happen to be there to hit me and knock me off. I hate these things. Now, I, I know this is an older game, but there's something that they really should have implemented. You know how in Metroid, if you get hit, you get about a half a second of invulnerability, so in case you get trapped between two monsters, you can safely escape? Yeah, they don't have that for this game. <laughs> Here, watch this. Instantly melted between two regular creatures. Like I said, this level tests you. But we finally managed to find the crest for the blacksmith and get the knight's sword. So, you all know the routine by now. Find the key, kill the bo- Whoa, what the hell was that? <laughs> this boss just completely decimated us in like two seconds. So look, I'm not a fan of cheating, but there is a trick in the game where you can use an item called Saber Oil, and I think the developers made a little mistake because the effects stack. I'll be honest with everyone, from here on out, <laughs> I try to always stack Saber Oil because these bosses get hard, and I really want to beat this game. Alright, back to it. Kill the boss, get the Holy Crystal, on to level 6. Now a little trip down memory lane. I've never gotten past this level. I've actually never even found the town of this level. So from here on out, we're all discovering these levels for the first time together. So after about five or six broken keyboards from me throwing them out the window, I finally found a key and I finally got into the town. All right, time to upgrade our weapons. Whoa, holy shit, this sword is expensive. Ugh, okay, let's go get some gold. <laughs> and of course, this greedy bastard has the shittiest exchange rate so far. That makes no sense because they're surrounded by gold. Sorry everyone, there's no way I'm letting this cheap bastard take our almas at a 1 to 4 ratio. So screw that expensive sword, we're just going to go straight through the level. Let's do level 6. Now we have to go and find a thing called the Silkhorn Shoes. It lets us climb these slopes, but the thing is, this level is huge. Also, the enemies are pretty much the same from level 5 to level 6. The lady is pretty much the zombie, the bird is pretty much the eye, but one new enemy is the Cyclops Octopus thing. I'm gonna call him Octoclops. He pretty much replaces the anti-gravity assholes, but he can fly, so he moves anywhere he wants. He sucks a lot because he is always knocking us off the platform when we're trying to get from one place to another. This level took me hours to get through. It feels like we're going in circles, but through sheer willpower, we finally find the Silkhorn Shoes. Once that happens, we thankfully get the same routine. We find the keys, we kill the boss, we get the Holy Crystal, and we're off to level 7. There was one weird thing about this level though. There was a door that we couldn't open. Not even with a key. I actually went back to double check after I got a key from level 7 and it still didn't work. Now, most games usually follow a certain pattern when it comes to difficulty. Not all do, but I think this graph is a pretty good representation of a way to keep a game fun yet still challenging. Each level gets progressively harder, but not by too much. <laughs> yeah, 
Well, level 7, they didn't follow this graph. Here's the graph of Zellyard up to level 7. Before we can explore level 7 though, we need a thing called the Asbestos Cape, because if we walk around without it, we get damaged over time. The guy who's selling it though, won't let us buy it with gold. We need to buy it with Almas. And what's this game been teaching us? All game? Trade the Almas for gold and then deposit it. So once we get the cloak, we can adventure through level 7. Now, this level has three different areas. It's only one more than every other level we've played, right? What makes this one different is the entire area is just a copy and paste of the same terrain. This might look easy, but the level has these gusts of wind that will push you back. So after three days of this nightmare of a level, I finally cracked. I used a guide because I'm not stopping until I beat this game. Two decades is long enough. We get the damn key, use the saber oil, we kill the boss, get the crystal, and on to the last level. Now here's the thing about level 8. <laughs> I really think the developers wanted to issue us an apology for the previous level. They make us work hard to get a thing called the Lion's Head Key, but once we get it, we have to go back to level 6 and it opens that door that we couldn't open before. Inside this room we get two things that make this game a ton of fun. You get the Feruza Shoes that let you jump higher and you get the best sword in the game called the Enchantment Sword. It kills every single enemy with one hit. The other thing they give us is the strongest spell in the game. They call it a lightning spell and its name is Gura, but I call it the spell of squares. It does a ton of damage. <laughs> I actually went back to previous levels just so I could kill enemies that piss me off throughout the game. Anti-gravity assholes, die. Red blobs, smush. Octoclops, oh you think you're gonna get away? <laughs> Gura. Now I'm not saying level 8 is easy, it's still a hard level, it's just not as hard as level 7 was in my opinion, but because of our new equipment and our new spells, I was able to beat it. Now all we have to do is beat the boss. The only thing hard about this boss is he has this unblockable attack that's guaranteed to hit you, but because of our new spells and our new equipment, he's really not that hard, I actually beat him on my first try. Now, what really makes level 8 hard is the fact that once you beat this boss, you have to fight the last boss immediately after. It takes you a good 15 minutes to actually get to the level 8 boss, so you can't just go back. And if you die, he gets resurrected so you have to fight him again. And the only reason why I know this is because I died to the last boss once. So I get back to the final boss and I, I finally beat him. The game is finally over. I've waited years for this. Let's see what we got. So we pass out from our fight, and then we go to the princess and restore her. Looks like all's well that ends well. But then the spirit comes, and he says there's more to do in other lands. And then we leave, with the princess saying we'll be back one day. You have got to be kidding me. Really? That's the ending? That right there is the ending. And just like Loom, this game doesn't have a sequel. I went digging around everywhere to see if there might be an interview or some information that might give us some closure. Nope, doesn't exist. This is the second game in a row that's done this to us. Let's at least make sure the game looks right for the end. There we go. Reliving this game is like watching a horror movie that really scared you as a kid, but then when you watch it again as an adult, you realize it wasn't what you thought it was. Zellard is by no means a bad game. I enjoyed it. The music was awesome, the controls weren't bad, but playing this game as a kid had me remember it differently. When I would do an attack or cast a spell, this is what I saw. When really, this is all it was. I can see myself playing this game again and can recommend it to anyone who wants an adventure game that'll challenge them. Just be sure you have your strategy guide ready for level 7. Speaking of which, the maps, the box art, and the strategy guide were all generously provided to me. I'll link the website in the description below. And I just wanted to thank them so much for providing me with a guide that stopped me from breaking my computer. I just wanted to thank everyone for watching DW Relive Reviews, and if there's a game you'd like us to review, please leave it in the comments below. As always, relive those great moments one game at a time. Until next time.